Hey, quick update to all you folks that have been asking about my GeoLayers Premium course. You can follow the link in the video description to learn more about that. So if you have photos that have GPS data, you can actually geo-reference those images into your map animations when using GeoLayers inside of Adobe After Effects. And today I'm gonna break down how to do this step by step. So I've got a project open and GeoLayers is already set up. I've got a cool photograph here of a spot in my city. This used to be a really disgusting spot. It was probably the ugliest part of the city. And then they added this beautiful piece of art which makes it now like one of my favorite areas. So today I wanna to create a little image or photo map marker that shows where this is located in the city. So for this technique, you essentially just find the coordinates in the GPS data, copy it, and then paste it directly in the GeoLayers panel, and then assign that as a feature. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that. Now, unfortunately, you can't do it directly inside of After Effects. You can go over here to Window and Metadata, and with the image selected, I can open up and look at the EXIF data, which is gonna show me some of the GPS information right here. The metadata is right here, but unfortunately I can't copy this. I need to copy it and be able to paste it right here. There are a couple different things you can do. You can actually go over to this website called pick to map and this allows you to view all of that data. So you can select a photo from your local drive. So I can just go grab this photo it's going to upload it and now it gives me this little profile of you know information about the camera the date the address where it was taken so i can copy this address but one thing that's cool about geo layers is you can actually copy the coordinates so right here i have the degrees minutes and seconds coordinates so you can actually just copy that and then come over here to geo layers and then in this little search bar here if you paste it it's going to pop up as a feature right here and this allows you to harness any of the tools inside of GeoLayers to then create, you know, animate this. So I'm going to add this to my browser. And then with this selected, I'm going to go click on Feature Properties. And I'm just going to rename this and we'll call this Street Art. And now if I double click on it, it's going to bring my map directly there. And if I actually go over to my composition here, now we can see that. Big shout out to my tier three patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flumi Plus One, Barnes Creative Studios, Josh, and Kroki. Thanks folks for making this video possible. There's an even faster way. I actually have all my photos uh, stored in Google Photos. And if you look at them in Google Photos and click on the little info, you can view the metadata. And it gives you this little map here. And if you click on the map, it brings you straight to Google Maps. But what's cool is they have the actual coordinates already brought up here in the search panel. They're here and they're here. And this is two different formats. Here we have the decimals, uh, decimal degrees, I think, or decimal, I forget what it's called, decimal coordinates. And then down here they have the degrees, minutes, and seconds. So no matter which one you wanna copy and paste, you can copy either of these. They will both work inside of GeoLayers as long as it's not some weird formatting issue. So if I post this one in here, You'll see, well, actually that was the one we used before, but if we post the copy and paste the decimal ones as well, that one shows up as well. Very cool. So with this data, what I wanna do is I wanna add a null as a label that I can then later bring in the photograph and then attach it to the null and do all my beautiful animations. So up here, I can go to the default label templates and at the bottom, you'll see null layer. And then with the street art geodata selected, I'll click on label features, add null and that's gonna add this null object. And it says it right here, label street art pinned. If you go to effect controls, you can see all of the features here. Now, I know that this street art is actually located at the end of this little alleyway here. So I took the photograph from right here standing against this building, but I wanna put the marker directly where the street art is located. So I can do that using the pixel offset feature here. So I'm just gonna move this feature a little bit like this and like this to place that null directly over the end of my alleyway. And there are a couple of other options here. I also want it to rotate with the map because if I change the pitch of the map, I want the null to be flat with the map. If I don't, it's gonna be like a 2D object. So I'm gonna go rotate with map and now it's ready to go. And what that did is now if I change the pitch of this map like this, you can see the null moves along with that. If I Deselect, rotate with map, you'll see it will remain as a 2D object. So make sure you have that selected. I'll go ahead and reset that rotation. Now I could just go ahead and attach the image to the null layer, but I wanna create a nice little map marker icon label that I can put the photograph in. So I'm gonna create a new pre-comp here and I'll call it map marker icon. And now I'm just gonna use a couple of shape layer elements to create this. So I'll grab the pen tool and just really quickly 
slap something together here. So we'll create something like this. And then we'll go down to the stroke attribute and I can just taper this off a little bit. I'll go to end length like this. Maybe make the end width like five. We'll call that pin. And I'm gonna to go to the ellipse tool and we'll quickly create like a border as well as a mat. So I'm gonna hold shift, double click. That's gonna give me this ellipse. I'm gonna call this border and then I'll duplicate this and I'll call this mat. And now for the mat, I'm gonna turn off the stroke element. Now I can bring in the street art image. So I've got this image now, which is huge. I'm gonna scale it down. So now if I grab the track mat for this and I use the mat to knock it out, now I have this beautiful little composite here. Um, and it's a little bit too big, so I need to connect everything now. So I will connect. It's important that I connect the map to the or the mat to the border. And then I'm gonna turn the visibility of the mat off. And now if I control the the border, the mat's gonna follow. And now if I scale this down, we have a cool little map icon. And I can just adjust the image here. You know, one of these days coming up, I'm gonna make a whole pack of these icons that have placeholders, like image placeholders, and I'm gonna design them in a way that they have controls and they're super easy to use. Um, if you'd like to see that, hit me up down in the comment section and I can put that together. And now we're gonna to wanna to make this a different color as well. So let's do like a red here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this, do the same thing with the pin element, red. And I don't know why the fill's on, let's turn the fill off. Okay, so now I have this pre-comp and I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna bring this map marker icon into my project. So now we have this little map marker. So now I need to connect it to this null. So I'm gonna grab the parent pick whip. I'm gonna hold shift and then I'm gonna release it on here. Now you see the problem is, is that it connected it to the anchor point. So the anchor point is up here. So what I wanna do for that is simply move the anchor point of the pre-comp. And I can grab the anchor point tool and I can move it down. I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna move it down to the bottom of the composition, it should snap. That's why I placed it, the tip of the map marker um, at the bottom of the comp so that the anchor point would easily snap there. And now let's go ahead and connect it again. Hold shift, and there we go, now we've got it connected. And it's a little bit off here, so let's just move our map here so we can see it. Now I can go and I can scale it, and now let's see what happens when I pitch the map around. Okay, it's looking 2D already, but that's because we don't have this set to 3D. So if I set it to 3D, it's gonna be following this null. So now I can manually grab it and just rotate it this way. So I can rotate it by 90, and now we have a proper 3D look here. I can go back in here and just start to, now it's just a matter of tweaking the styles, like bumping up the borders, increasing that border, and increasing the width of this as well until we get it the way that we like it. I can zoom out. I'm gonna zoom out quite a bit here. Now to control this even further, I can grab this here and I can set this to scale with map. This is the null object. So now it's gonna be controlled via this null and I can still control the scale of this as well in the actual pre-comp. So there's just a million ways you can do this. I can leave it at 100 and now if I scale this, it's going to adjust its size with the map because if this is turned off here, it's gonna be ginormous. So you just gotta kinda pick the look you want and it's still looking way too flat in 2D. So one big thing that's gonna help is to add a shadow. So to add a shadow, I'm gonna duplicate this map comp and then I'll grab this bottom one and I'll call shadow, I'll add shadow to the name. And then I'm gonna add a drop shadow effect to it and then set the shadow to shadow only. And now check this out, watch what happens when I grab the shadow only and I turn the rotation down back 90% or 90 degrees and then I bump up the softness now we have a shadow and I can turn down the opacity and you can even rotate it a little bit like this to have it, you know, make it look a little bit more realistic. And another great thing to bring out the depth here is to add a fake depth of field. I have a standalone tutorial that shows you how to do that. So I'm just gonna zip through this quickly. And then as the final, final touch, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer here. And then we'll add my new noisy vignette effect here. And then I'll just grab that vignette and plop it right over here. And now to create a little animation, I'm just gonna change the bearing a little bit. We'll do bearing like this. We'll add a keyframe here. And this will give you a feeling for this like 3D map marker look with this fake shadow that we created. Finalize this and I'll render it out.
And what I really love about this workflow is that it's super easy to change what's inside the map marker icon. So for example, I have this beautiful picture of this beautiful man and I could jump into the pre-comp here and now I can just drop this photo in here. I can turn on the visibility of my mat layer and now I can simply use that as the track mat as well and then come here and resize this. And you can see that I can not only, you know, put this one photograph in here, but I can put a bunch of stuff and I could animate a whole sequence or throw videos in here as well. And voila, super easy. Now this looks much better. When I started this project, I was hoping that GeoLayers already had a feature to automatically geo-reference photos. You know, it seems easy enough because the metadata is there, but I spoke with the creator, uh, Marcus, and he said that he, he tried to put this in the program, but it's much harder to actually get this as a feature. So I don't know if that means it will hopefully be in a future version, but unfortunately, um, this seems to be the workflow. However, if you have a different way of doing this, I would love to hear your method. I briefly looked for other scripts on anescripts.com to see if there was um, maybe an EXIF reader that could automatically pull that as text and then I could just copy paste it directly in After Effects. That would be the best method. Um, but all I could seem to find was there was like a plugin for uh, Premiere Pro, but I didn't find much for Adobe After Effects. So again, if you know of any tool like that, hit me up in the comment section. And as always, if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And if you really like making map animations, go check out my Patreon page where you can get monthly exclusive tutorials as well as project files, animation presets, and just be uh, a cool cat. All right, I'll see you in the next one.